everyone welcome back to the YouTube channel my name is Rachel Langston I'm an owner and craft educator here at Oak and Lamb Today we're going to chat all about ironing on wood. This can be a really complicated thing if you are a Cricut beginner and not something you thought was even possible. There are some really fun workarounds and a lot of success in using HTV on wood. There are a couple of specifications and picky, nitpicky things you want to look out for when creating projects like ironing on wood, but if you can follow these rules, you will have a ton of success and fun doing this in the future. Supplies are actually really minimum for ironing on wood. So you're gonna need, of course, your piece of wood. This is a, it, it's, really decorative so you hang it on the wall but this could be used for uh, food of course now after we apply vinyl to it it will be decorative like it isn't intended to be but this is from the spring shop at hobby lobby our local craft store i will link this down below but this is a nice flat smooth piece of wood that's going to be great uh, to apply iron iron on too now uh, just to preface, if you are a Cricut very, very beginner and you're not sure what even I mean by iron on HTV, I'll be throwing out a lot of terminology here. Uh, definitely check out the types of vinyl and the differences between them. I will have that video linked for you all. There's a lot of different types of vinyl you might want to look out when purchasing those. You want to know and make sure that you're using the proper type of vinyl for whatever project you're using it on. So definitely check out that video. Make sure you're using the correct type of vinyl that you're buying the right types, the right brands and things like that. So that'll help you in the long run as well. But this is a nice, smooth, flat piece of wood that we did get at Hobby Lobby and it will be perfect for iron on. Now you want it to be very flat, very smooth, and you don't want there to be a lot of finish on it. It's okay if it has a little paint on it or a little bit of stain, but you don't want it to be heavily coated in pretty much anything you want it to be able to stick to the wood pretty well. Uh, this is a, an example I give all the time with ironing on projects like wood. So iron on or HTV, meaning heat transfer vinyl, uh, does just that. You have to apply heat in order to transfer. It is used and manufactured to clean and apply to clothing. So fibers. So if you have your clothes here, let's say this is a t-shirt and you have your iron on here. Once you place that iron on onto that t-shirt and you apply heat, that iron on is going to bond to the material of that shirt and you're gonna have a good strong bond there uh, because it is meant to kind of seep into those fabrics and fibers and really bond well to that. Now, once you place iron on onto not a shirt, but a piece of wood, which is, porous but not like fibrous you're going to be applying heat to that iron on and then that adhesive has nowhere to cling so it's just going to kind of melt but stay where it's at so because of that you want to be really careful when you're heating this careful when you're peeling it off there are a couple of extra precautions you need to take when ironing on wood that you don't have to do when you iron on pretty much anything else because it is a bit of a tricky thing to do. It's not necessarily intended to be done, but I personally really love the look of iron on wood on lots of my projects. Once you've picked a really good, flat, smooth piece of wood, and by the way, if you buy one and you think, okay, well, there's a little bit of a coating on there, you can get a sanding block or sandpaper and sand that down if you want to. However, if it's going to compromise the look of it, don't do it. The more that you do this process, the more that you try, the easier it will become. Okay, now let's talk about HTV. We are using Caesar Easy Weed. We already have it preloaded onto a mat today, shiny side down. If you all are brand new to the world of Cricut and you're not really sure how to use HTV in itself, we do have a great video all about a beginner's guide to using heat transfer vinyl. It will walk you through everything and make you super confident in using this material so that you can jump into projects like this with a ton of confidence. So we have that all ready to go. We're using the color black and we're gonna be placing it on this board here. We also have a Teflon sheet. This is not a necessity when it comes to iron on wood projects. However, sometimes I feel it's really nice to have near you. So we have one of those on the table today. And the easy press we're using is the mini easy press. This is one of the most important things about this entire project. I do not recommend you use iron on for wood unless you have a mini easy press. That's not saying it has to be Cricut brand. A mini press 
at all. Any kind of brand you want. We've tested a lot of them from Amazon. A lot of them work great. They're very comparable to the Cricut, but you want a very small heat plate. Here's the deal. You will never be able to find a piece of wood that's perfectly flat, perfectly straight, perfectly smooth. So the larger your heat plate, the more uneven your heat is going to be because the wood is wavy and the heat plate is completely straight. You're not going to be able to get a good uh, adhesion there with a large heat plate. A heat plate so small like the Mini Easy Press can really get into the nooks and crannies of the waviness of the boards. It is honestly the key to the success of wood uh, projects when you are ironing on them. I'm not saying you will not get success using other methods, but we have had a lot of issues using larger easy presses and heat presses and things like that. So our number one recommendation is to get the mini easy press. Now we love this thing for all kinds of things. We use this almost daily here in the studio. So I'm not saying only get this for iron on wood because you will find so many different functions for your little mini easy press. We absolutely love having him around. So that about does it on supplies. Of course, we have our Cricut here we're using our Explore 3. We have our material already on our mat and we have some tools here to the side. Measuring tape, true control knife, weeding tool, things like that. Without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into it. One thing you want to do before we do jump into design space, and this will be explained if you watch that beginner's guide to using HTV video, but if you can measure your blank and again, Terminology, if you're a beginner, is sometimes confusing. Blank refers to any item you're going to be placing vinyl on. So this is our blank today, and it is 11 inches by 11 inches in the center. So this is what we're going to use. We're going to measure this, and we're going to apply a circle into design space in order to properly visualize our entire project. It helps so much when you're just beginning and when you've been doing this for years. I still do this, and it really, really helps to take the guesswork out of sizing. So 11 inches, make sure that you have your measuring tape so you can measure your blank items. Here we are in design space and we have just added a circle here from basic shapes. And all we did was bring it in here and changed it from a, a two inches, which is default to 11 inches. We changed that color to better signify um, the color of our actual blank and then we added our cut file on it. Uh, of course, this is one of the many, many, many cut files we have at Oak and Lamb. If you guys are interested, we would love to welcome you as a member of our flock. We have hundreds of cut files, amazing member only content, a exclusive Facebook community that is absolutely unmatched and we are always constantly adding more to our membership to just upgrade that, level it up for you guys and always challenge you to be better at your craft. So definitely join, click the very first link below. We would love to have you in our membership. And this is a cut file where you can add in your date. So this has a blank space here for you to use any font that your little heart desires to add into that uh, so that you can give this as a gift. Now this of course is great for um, multiple types of things. Today, we're gonna to be putting it on this cutting board that is gonna be decorative. Uh, so what we're gonna do is click make it. Now, since our circle was just uh, for visualization purposes, you do not need that anymore. We had it here to be able to size our cut file properly. And again, it's so easy to size cut files when you have the actual size in design space digitally. It's amazing, I would highly recommend that. So you can hide that or delete it, whatever you would like to do. And now we're going to click make it. Now we are going to click on mat. We never really use off the mat. We do not prefer it. And we are also using HTV. So we have to mirror this again. If you're a little bit confused on why we're doing what we're doing, uh, definitely check that video out. Once again, I'll have it linked in the description below as well but it is a beginner's guide to using HTV. It will go through all of the nitty gritty on why you have to treat HTV so different than other types of vinyl. Now I'm gonna click continue and connect to my machine. And now we'll just select our material, which is everyday iron on. And of course it says, make sure mirror is turned on and iron on material is face shiny side down on the mat. So once you have all that completed, you can load this into your machine and go ahead and cut this out. And now we'll just load this on up in our machine. And 
And now we can go ahead and unload the mat. And I have our weeding tool here and a true control knife. Now, we're gonna take our true control knife and trim off the excess material here that we do not need. Just like that, you can remove that. And now we'll take our weeding tool and weed around this. I love weeding HTV. I think it is so therapeutic and it's really easy to do. Beautiful. Okay, now we'll get the insides of all of these letters here. There's some teeny tiny ones in these twos. There we go. Perfect. Now go ahead and preheat your Easy Press. We're gonna preheat ours to the second heat setting on that mini and allow it to go ahead and preheat. Now while that's preheating, we can remove our design from our mat here and bring in our piece of wood and line this up how we want it. The one good thing about iron on wood, which I personally love, is you can maneuver this how many times you want. So you can place it down, pick it up, look at it, peel it up, replace it. It is, it is great to be able to get something perfectly straight and perfectly even because of how easy it is to peel up and place back down. So be picky about it, get out your measuring tape and make sure this is nice in the center right where you want it. Okay, and once you have this placed right where you want it and your Easy Press is preheated, keep your Teflon sheet close by, but again, you might not need it. Now here's what we're gonna do. We are going to apply light pressure starting in the middle and moving our way out of this project. So I'm gonna take this Start in the center. One thing I love about this mini easy press is it is double ceramic coated, meaning it's pretty much made to do this, to be moved around like this. So I'm just going through here and slowly working my way from the center out. I feel like this does a good job at preventing any uh, bubbles or curling or anything like that because once you do heat this Teflon, or excuse me, once you do heat this transfer sheet, it has a tendency to kind of bow up on you a little bit. And if you work from the center out, it kind of minimizes the damage that that can do on your design. So just go nice and slow. You do not really have to set a timer, honestly. A lot of people... Um, don't set timers. It wasn't created with a timer like a lot of the other uh, easy presses and heat presses were, uh, simply because you usually rely on your site, how it looks to see when this is done. Whereas if you have a uh, easy press with a much larger heat surface, heating plate, you can't really see what's going on. So definitely um, check this as you go. That's why I don't love to use Teflon uh, because I really like to see how this is looking, but it is looking good. I can tell I need to get in some of these grooves better. So I'm gonna go ahead and lay my Teflon down and give this a little bit of a heat with my Teflon. And the reason I love using my Teflon as well uh, for certain projects is because it adds a layer of, I, I don't know how to say it, it's like, I know my heat plate is super rigid and this is not rigid. And I feel like when I lay this down and heat it, the heat in this helps to transfer in those little grooves that maybe my heat plate can't quite get in too well. So I hope that does make sense, but I do enjoy using both of these um, methods. So no Teflon sheet and using a Teflon sheet when I'm using iron on wood. Uh, I'm, I'll also say about nine times out of 10, there will be at least one area where you need to hit again with your easy press. That is completely normal, especially with wood projects where there's just so much predictability um, of how it's gonna look. So don't neglect any of these pieces here. You can sometimes even see visually uh, the parts that are sticking well and the parts that are not. Another thing I wanna mention is, I will do a cold peel on this. You wanna do a cool peel. You do not wanna peel this hot or warm because that adhesive has not had a chance to bond to anything and it needs to cool down in order to be successful. So we're just gonna let this cool here. 
I think I'm done mangling it up for a bit. So I'm gonna let this cool for a little while. I think this bottom part is adhered really well. And we're just gonna work on the mom and see how well it is adhered. Now, again, it's totally normal to peel this up and to have a couple of issues to work through. That is totally fine. So bear with us, be patient while this cools down and we'll check this out. But I do also want to mention, when you're using iron on wood, the thicker the design, the longer it's gonna take you to get it to adhere down. Now these thin little letters and things does not take a lot to adhere because there's not a lot of letters there. There's not a lot of adhesive to adhere down onto the wood. On thicker parts like this O on the text and the M, the size of the M's, where that is thick and all the adhesive has to melt in order to stick to the wood, it can take a little bit longer to get it to adhere properly. So these are just some things to think about. And you probably are gonna ask yourself, well, Rachel, why can't I just apply regular old vinyl onto this? You totally can if you want to. But I personally think that the look of HTV on certain projects like this gives it a better, more professional look and feel, um, especially when it's, when it's done. Now, we'll also talk about durability. This is gonna be really, really durable. Again, it does come with a jute because it was, it is a decorative piece. It's not, really meant to be used, but you can use it if you want to. Once you apply vinyl to it, it is not te technically food safe. If you wanted to make this food safe, you would need to add some type of AB part uh, or part AB resin to this or some UV resin, uh, something super, super permanent and sealing for this uh, because it is not food safe with the HTV on it. Now, again, this is for decorative purposes, so we're not really worried about that, but I know I'm gonna get questions about, well, can I put a cheesecake on this or can I make this a charcuterie board? Uh, totally up to you, depending on how you want to seal this if you want to. So now that this is nice and cool, I'm gonna start in a corner and peel up and I see one of our leaves is not sticking down already, so I'm gonna go in. And what I'm doing when I go in this part is I'm kind of pushing my easy press inward and kind of getting down in that little piece a little bit better. And again, this does not mean project failure. This is a good sign that so much of this is sticking down so well. This is, look at that, how beautiful. So just go very slow when you remove these. You want to be able to catch any imperfections or anything like that. And that is gorgeous. This looks stunning. Now, I love iron on wood because of how professional it looks. You can barely even see it. Whereas regular vinyl, it's, it just kind of sticks out more like a sore thumb. It looks a little bit more unprofessional to me on projects like this, not in general, on projects like this because when, when something is flat and smooth, I wanna try and keep it that way. And when you put bulky adhesive vinyl on it, I just feel like it really cheapens it, cheapens the look of it. So this is a really great alternative. It does not take long at all. It gives it a really professional look. Now you could take this now and get some Minwax polycrylic or something like that and brush polycrylic on it and seal that up really nice. Or you can leave it as is or add resin like I mentioned. Whatever you wanna do, the possibilities are endless. But this is a beautiful project. What did you all think of this amazing transformation? I love the way that this turned out. It was such a fun and simple project to make. You do not have to be afraid of ironing on wood. It is not very intimidating at all. As long as you follow a couple simple rules, make sure that your wood is nice and flat and not too treated. Also, make sure that you have a good size heat plate, which is really, really small. The smaller, the better to get into those nooks and crannies of your wood projects. You can use any machine you have to make this, not just Cricut. Um, and we love to teach things like this to you all. If you did enjoy this project and enjoy the way that we teach, click the subscribe button down below and ring the bell to get notified when more amazing videos like this come out. We would love for you to subscribe to the channel here. Also, here at Oak and Lamb, we not only teach on Cricut, but we teach on laser cutters, we teach on sublimation, woodworking, sewing, and so much more. Whatever crafty area you're passionate about, we like to meet you there and grow you and help you become more confident in that area. Thank you all so much for watching. Click the very first link below if you would like to become a member with Oak and Lamb today, and I will see you another day for another video.